and welcome back to Black Girl Soar. I'm your host, Alisa Henry, and I'm so excited to join you today. In partnership with CTV, Black Girl Soar is a one-of-a-kind four-part series designed to inspire, motivate, and amplify the stories, strong potential, and promise of Black girls. The series will address key topics and areas directly impacting Black girls here in Central Ohio. Today's episode is Black Girls Self-Care Matters. In many ways, 2020 was stressful and required major life adjustments, but now it's a new year and we get an opportunity to treat it as a fresh start. So let's get into these simple ways to make your mental health and self-care a priority this year and forever. Let's hear from Tashia Safford with the Center for Healthy Families. Thank you for joining me today. And yes, we are virtual. I wish we could be together in person sharing hugs and laughs. Like many of you, I look forward to the opportunity when we can connect face to face. But I'm excited that the Commission on Black Girls founded by Councilmember Tyson has found a way to keep you and all of us connected. So let's take a deep breath and exhale because we know that 2020 was a challenging year to say the least. Understand that you are not alone. It's been tough. The isolation, not being in school, and yes, not being with your friends. And a number of you are managing loss. I believe that young women like yourselves have tremendous power. It's illuminated through your daily actions to help uplift others. You're creating a brighter future for yourselves. Never before have I witnessed young girls like you push through. Yes, you have shown incredible resilience. Your sense of power is, let's just say, nothing can hold you back. For more than 13 years, the Center for Healthy Families has worked to improve the lives of youth. We create a space where girls and young women can claim their identity boldly and unapologetically. In a society where Black women and girls are often underrepresented, misrepresented, or ignored, we are proud to be a part of a community that sounds the alarm. Our girls matter. We're honored that the research done by the Commission on Black Girls will activate the launch of the Center's Advocacy and Public Policy Pillar. The Commission on Black Girls' new home is the Center for Healthy Families. The Commission on Black Girls' work is advocacy creating social and public policy transformation that would affect the lives of Black girls. When we improve the lives of Black girls, all girls benefit, our community benefits. It's an honor to join you today. I applaud your honesty, sharing your stories, and inspiring others around you. Connections like these are essential to the work that is ahead of us. I look forward to today's courageous conversation. So let's engage, inspire, and then transform. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, ladies and young girls, for joining us this evening for our conversation titled, In My Feelings, Mental Health and Wellness. The pandemic has just came in and turned things around in so many different ways. So we're gonna get a good picture of how you ladies are coping during this pandemic and talk about your feelings. Uh, I want to open it up uh, by starting with a question. And the question is, the pandemic has people feeling low. School is shut down. You can't be with your friends. You're withdrawn. There's unemployment. Sometimes we're struggling with our sleep. Tell me how you ladies are dealing with the new normal it's hard to manage life socially academically mentally it's just a lot of stuff going on like but we're literally living through history right now like this is gonna be in textbooks but it's important for us as black girls to keep ourselves uplifted and empowered especially considering how difficult the times are now for me i love hanging out with my friends like them are girls. Like, I love hanging out with them. Like, I love seeing them. Like, just seeing their faces. Like, hey, hey. Like, I just love seeing my friends. And now, like, if we hang out, I can't even see my best friend's nose and mouth. I mean, it's a struggle. But, like, you know, FaceTime, text has been has been our rock throughout this entire time. And academically, it's hard learning online. And it's hard to 
express that to parents, especially when they see your grades looking, hey, sis, what's that? Hey, online school is hard. It's really, it's difficult. But we got to remember, like, reaching out to people, like, counselors, teachers, like, hey, I need some extra help in this class right here. It's really important. And you really need to recognize, like, it's really hard to recognize when you do need help. But, like, learning that skill and, like, building it up to the point where you can, hey, I need some help. Or, hey, I'm going through a really tough time right now. Or just having somebody in your corner to talk to is really important. At first, it really was hard to learn home. But now, I, like, I've adjusted to it. And I kind of enjoy learning at home now. So that I can be with my family more. I get to get the things done around the house because I have, like, a little bit of time in between classes. I kind of like the environment more, but I feel like during the pandemic, you just have to make the best out of what you're giving. With the pandemic going on, you have to kind of find things that also make you happy when you can't be around your friends or be socially involved with the community. Um, so one thing that I started to do was um, practice more self-care, work out, and I actually started painting during the pandemic. So that's kind of something that helped keep me insane and just, you know, help my mental health with just being overdrawn with being online all this time. But if you could share with us maybe your favorite memory of 2020 and why, I would love to hear it. My grandmother, she moved in with us and I will say that I've been taking advantage of that because I really love her. And she got like tested and all that to make sure that we don't sick or anything. But I felt like I was family because she was there with us, especially because we like lived by herself. We weren't going to be able to see her and such because of the pandemic because we didn't want to get sick. But then she moved in with us. So I felt like I was like closer to family because she was there with us and we didn't like have to like go back for a mile or like be bad or depressed that our that we couldn't see our family. Getting over 200 people registered to vote in the community. Um, I feel like that's just like a big accomplishment, um, especially for our community, you know, before a lot of black people were not registered to vote or people of color. So just to get that many people registered to vote and be active in the community so that this election year can go smoother than we would like. Um, I just think that was one of my best memories of 2020. I just want to say maybe just getting through this pandemic without, you know, just getting through the pandemic. <laughs> that was... <laughs> That's one of my favorite memories. Like, I feel like that was one of my strongest moments. Like, there are a lot of points where I was really down. There was a lot of points where I didn't feel like doing anything. Really, like, not motivated at all, but, like, picking myself up and getting to a point where I could talk about it. That been, that's one of my favorite moments. I don't, I have a few moments. Um, <laughs> but one thing I think I'll say um, that I'm really thankful for this uh, year is how so many people have really prioritize their mental health. You know, people have really kind of gotten into this self-care, um, especially people of color and, you know, black girls and black women, you know, we're like, I think the ladies uh, mentioned taking advantage of the time um, to just really take care of yourself. But the people are taking this serious and taking care of themselves. And so I'm just really thankful for that. Uh, as all of you ladies alluded to so far, you um young girls as that, your self-care is so important. And we can do so much um, and uh, for other people, to help other people. But my philosophy is two sick people can't help each other. So you have to be in a healthy place to help somebody else. So as we continue to talk about In My Feelings, mental health and wellness, I have another question that I would like to ask. Uh, uh, despite all that's going on, it's important to remain true to who you are, and that is to who you are. How do you maintain your values and your sense of self during these difficult times? Um, I guess I can take that question first. I live by the motto, always stay true to yourself, no matter what it is you're going through, um, what's coming your way, what downfalls you are having, what even upfalls you're having. It is always, that is very important to me. And I think it should be important to a lot of people, especially people of color, because just like the pandemic, for example, that is something that can put you in a bad place. Um, your mental health can deteriorate. But if you're staying true to yourself, knowing who you are, your values, your morals, doing what you love you you can't nobody can change you because you know who you are you know who you are and you're still true to yourself so 
I just think if you live by that, you go by what you live by, you do what makes you happy, you don't worry about what anyone else has to say about how you live in your life, then be great. Um, so we do affirmations before every class, and that really helps me to, you know, take that practice and, and incorporate it into my daily life. Like waking up and just affirming to myself that I am enough, that I can do anything that I set my mind to, and really setting goals because if you set a goal and you really set to achieve that goal, then you're gonna do anything. So maintaining that value of, hey, I'm affirming to myself that I can do these things, that I'm this, this, and that, and through this pandemic and the not motive, not being motivated to do stuff, and still like affirming to myself, hey, you got through this, so you can get through this, this right here. That's really important to that throughout this time. Okay, <laughs> that's great. So you ladies have really touched on a lot of different things in terms of how you manage to keep your spirits up and keep you um, keep yourself sort of mentally fit. Someone that's um, struggling that may not um, have received some of the affirmations or who may not be as uh, resilient. What would be some advice that you would give them, um, you know, to kind of focus on that self care? and to kind of, you know, lift up some of those negative feelings they may be experiencing. I would tell them to find something they truly enjoy and like find their passion to keep their mind on the right do things. Like it can be art or it can be like work out or it can be like watching your book. Like doing something that you truly enjoy that you know will make you happy is a real good way to get your mind back on the right track to even like get to things that you want done, done eventually. It's important for people to just take a break and just do something for themselves. I agree with Kelly because during this pandemic, dance really helped me like a lot because I love to dance. Like that's my passion. I love to do that. And when the pandemic first hit, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Like I couldn't dance. Like what am I supposed to do? What? I don't know. I'm sitting here. So like just being in my room and just playing music and just grooving to the music, like that really built up me to a point where I could, hey. You got this. So finding something that you really love and truly enjoy and using that to help you get to a place where you can get through things and empower yourselves through it. And also recognizing when you need a break. Could you ladies uh, speak on how you maintain those relationships and whether they were strengthened or again, they were a little difficult? Cause I know for me, I miss my girlfriends just like you guys did. So I will say that something that has made relationships difficult in that time of 2020 um, with the pandemic going on, um, while we're on the topic of mental health and wellness, um, one week I can be going through something while my friends are going through something and I may not know. So I'm expecting them to check on me while they're expecting me to check on them, vice versa. And it's like, okay, well, they don't care about me. I'm going through something. So I'm just going to sit here and wait. But really what strengthens those relationships, what have strengthened is us coming together and actually having a conversation, keeping that communication between me and my friends. Because if neither one of us, neither of us started talking to each other, we probably wouldn't be friends because we would kind of be mad like, oh, well, you didn't care what I was going through through this time and that time. But both of our mental capacities were down. It wasn't up here, it was down here. So we have to just take a step back and talk to each other like, hey, um, I was going through this, you were going through that. Let's just, you know, talk about it from there. And that's where I feel like our relationships started to strengthen. But it can be difficult if you don't talk to one another. My friends and I, we we used each other as weight lifts, I guess you could say. I strengthened her, she strengthened me. We, we was together. We we work together like this. We work together in a pair. So when she was down and I was down at the same time, we'd be down together. But hey, we would we would strengthen each other up. But if we were going through a tough time, it just it's sometimes a tough time is better to go through if you have your friend with you with you there. And that FaceTime, like I said, FaceTime and text, it was really it was really used a lot. I promise you, my messaging and data rates they were going skyrocket high <laughs> during this pandemic. I want to say thank you, girls, for this discussion. Uh, this evening, you've given me some, some wisdom, some things to walk away with that I can use. 
And I want to leave everybody who is a part of this conversation, as well as those that are listening with a charge for 2021. I want each of you to develop a positive upstream uh, mental health wellness plan, a positive upstream. We want to go upstream in 2021. Develop your positive mental health and wellness plan now. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, girls. Once again, I truly, truly enjoyed this conversation. My name is Cezanne, and I'm a black girl who soars. On each episode, we will shine a light on African-American female pioneers and leaders who blaze the trail for black girls like me. In today's segment, we recognize Dr. Mamie Phipps Clark. Mamie was the first African-American woman to earn a doctor's degree in psychology from Columbia University. Her groundbreaking research, dedication, and passion focused on the impact of race on child development and helped put it into segregation. This is Mamie, and she's a black girl who soars. I'm Mackenzie, and I'm a black girl who soars. Hi, everyone. I'm Amaya. I'm Candy. I'm Kaden. I'm Malia. I'm Rihanna. And I'm a black girl who soars. And I'm, and I'm a black girl who soars. And I am a black girl who soars. I'm Stephanie Patton. I'm Tonight. I'm Dr. Maria. I'm Fran Frazier. One thing I know for sure, black girl soars. I'm a black girl that soars. I'm a black girl who soars. We're all black girls who soar. Thanks for watching and make sure you stay tuned. We're just getting started. Hi, I'm Karen owner of Synergy Salon and Synergy Salon Products. And today I want to give you six affirmations for 2021 concerning you and your hair. Affirmation number one, I find that when people shampoo their hair at least weekly, they're just way happier with their hair and the results. Affirmation number two, find a stylist that loves healthy hair and that no matter what you do to your hair, she can always reroute you back to the real you. Find a stylist, a, a good stylist. Affirmation number three, be intentional about learning what your hair needs. Everybody's hair does something different and there's always something new coming out. Be intentional about growing, managing, and learning to love your own hair. Affirmation number four, in between wearing protective styles, braids, weaves, or wigs, learn how to love your hair underneath. So you can do, you can go as far out as possible, but remember, your hair, that's all you got. Take care of your hair underneath your other hair. Question number five, don't damage your hair. Just don't be doing a whole bunch of stuff that if your hair doesn't do that, Figure out what your hair does so that you don't have to damage the hair that God gave you. Affirmation number six, love your own hair first. Figure out what your hair does and love it for what it does. So those are my six affirmations for 2021. Karen, keep growing. Bye now. What do you all think makes Black women so magical? We know how to gracefully be bold. Who cares what they say at the end of the day? Period. Read, read. This event was curated for and by Black girls. So don't live for anyone but yourself. This is the best time to be as Black as you want to be. Hi, Sky. How are you? Show them what is possible. Comparison is the thief of joy. And I always tell people, don't start something and quit. Uh, that's beautiful. Next up, we have more hashtag Black Girl Magic. We in this bag getting this money. In Jesus' name, Joe. <laughs> you are capable of effectuating change. Black people have always told our own stories. We can still love somebody from a distance. We present the business pitch competition. And we will award $5,000. Scrubs by Jamie. Our yes. This has been Black Girl Soar with us. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Kelly, and I'm going to have a conversation with my sister, Aaliyah, about how we're going to start the new year living our best life. Um, so I'm going to go right into the questions. And one of the first questions that I have for Aaliyah is, 
um, the stress that come with that comes with being in school and going through the pandemic. You know, it's hard being like, like online because like you don't have that discipline of like waking up every morning and sitting at a desk and making sure that you pay attention. So like it's hard when you don't want to fall asleep. You gotta pay attention. You don't want to be on your phone. But one thing that I learned is just that like I had to remind myself where I was going to go and where I needed to go instead of thinking about the short time where like yes like I would want to stay in my bed but I knew it would be better for me to like go in the kitchen sit at a table and actually like listen to what my professor is saying and listen to what the um, teacher is saying so I can pay attention to what I'm doing so it can help me in the future and I can get the grades that I want to get because even though we're in the middle of a pandemic you know my dreams don't stop and I can't stop what's going on so i have to be able to adapt in that situation and be able to how do i explain it be able to do what i need to do and do the best at what i'm doing yeah so what about you how did you you know do what you had to do for school kelly i did the same thing um also i am like really about my grades because i want to do good things in the future so even though i didn't want to considering i was at my home in the comfort of my own home i didn't want to get online and do school, but I want to do well in the future. So I got up, I sat at my desk and I got on Zoom, listened to my teachers to make sure that I can get my education that will help me in the future. So something else, like what did you do to stay motivated when you were at school? Because something that I did was I would read, write, do some art, um talk to my friends and to make sure that i stayed motivated and keep my mind on the right track and not like get down in the dumps um during the pandemic yeah that makes a lot of perfect sense like now like since i'm in college and stuff it's a whole different ball game of like, things that we're doing so me and my friends support each other like most of us are like in different majors but we love people want to go into the same thing even when we be doctors or lawyers so like we just talk to each other. We really do talk to each other. Like we know we can't see each other during the pandemic, but what we usually do is get on the phone and like we might play some music and dance along while we're on FaceTime. Or I might just like go into my own space and like crochet or knit, maybe do my makeup, do my hair, make myself feel good, look pretty. I was learning how to do a lot of things during that time just to help me focus in school. I mean, school takes up most of my time anyway. But like when I have the time to take care of myself, like I do what I want to do that makes me happy. I might dress up and walk around the house even though I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> but like it still feels like, you know, it still feels like me and I still feel like myself. And I just love doing that. So, yeah. But probably one question that I have for you is like, you know, what are some things that like remind you to take care of your mental health and like remind you to take care of yourself? during this time of like COVID-19? Well, something that I have that I have on me is a vision board that I made. And this is my vision board. It has things that keep me like on track. Like for instance, it has like a school, it says college up here and school and it says future. And it has like a nice picture of a black girl. But if I see it, then I feel like I will be more motivated to continuously do it and make the best out of my future because I want everything like put up on here so i have to actually like you don't things just don't drop into your lap so even though we're in a pandemic i want to actively keep going to make sure that i complete my goals right that's dope and i have a vision board too what i would like to show so this is mine i don't know you see it yeah you can see it so like something that i have on there is like naturally yours um you're not alone come on in and like and one thing that I like on here is the way a way outside of your comfort zone is still infinitely like comfortable and it like really held on to me because like during this time we are like literally in a come like uncomfortable situation but you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable and like this vision board literally just reminds me of like who you are not necessarily like the regular vision board of like my dreams and goals which I have more of those but my remind me of my mental health like where you need to go and continue to be like who you are while going through that process and like i just appreciate looking at it i have it in my bed so every time i wake up i'm like okay Aaliyah, you know get your mental health together make sure that you're doing okay do a little talk and everything so that's what i usually do when i just look at this and things so 
Another question, last question is like, so, you know, for 2021, what are some, what are some a New Year's resolution that you as a Black girl have and do you think other Black girls should obtain to do? I feel like 2021 is going to be what we make of it because we already got through 2020. So we have to try and make the best out of the new year and not necessarily put the past behind us, but take from what we learned from 2020 and move forward. I feel like my new year's resolution is for other Black girls to try and challenge themselves to be themselves, to be who they are, authentic, and not letting anybody push them out of that space and letting them show who they are, whether the world likes it or not. And a lot of times you can get pushed out of spaces. I go to a PWI, which means that the Black students are not really in the same ratio as our other counterparts. And sometimes it's hard, and sometimes it can be times where you are being pushed out or you being closed in where you feel like you have to change to fit the standard. But the thing about being a Black girl is like, that's what makes us us, because that's like, we're dope. Our melanin makes us dope. Being us makes us dope. So being authentic and being who you are is something that it's not just a 2021 resolution. It should just be throughout life that I feel like Black girls and even myself should take on and start doing. So, yeah. But Kelly, it was nice talking to you, my sister. You know, I love talking to you. And I can't wait to see what you're going to do in 2021 and the things that you're going to do. Um, and same for you girls for watching. Thank you for watching. And I hope y'all have a great 2021 and that you will all be yourselves and continue to be the dope, magical, Black girl magic that you can be. And thank you for being you. Thank you so much for joining today's Black Girl Soar, Black Girl Self-Care Matters. We hope you've been inspired to practice self-care to feel your best and shine your way through 2021. And for the Black girls watching, we hope you have especially felt seen and understood and are filled with hope that great things lie ahead for you. I'm Elisa Henry, and until next time, Black Girls Soar.